Welcome to part two, continuing off or where we are on this tutorial about presets, advanced preset types, and multi-dimensional arrays. Uh, again, using my Ion Cannon Wars map, QuickShot 14, it, videos out on that, if not already, will be soon. And of course, the map for that will also be released when those come out, either uh, linked from those maps, but will definitely be on StarCraft2Mapster.com. So, a multi-dimensional array, like I said, is that. So in this case, my dialogue item can hold 50 dialogue items, 50 once, it's a zero base, but let's just drop that for now and just say 50 dialogue items based on each player. So player one uh, dialogue item can hold 50. Now, if you look at this as a, if you use just a standard array, just a, a, a single array, I would need a hundred, a hundred single arrays, one by one, named all differently to equal this. So this is this is where it's like, whoa, yeah, that saves a lot, and it does. And it makes things a lot, lot simpler. Because basically all I have to do is say, okay, I want player one's uh, 15th dialogue item. Simple. So how, how do we set that? Real quick, we're going to take a look at my create, uh, my dialogue function. This is a, a simple function. I'm sorry, action definition, because it doesn't return anything, and it is an action, where it takes in the player number, and as you can see, it's being specified, okay, default is one, and it only takes one or two, because that's all we have for our array, and it's going to create a power dialog for them, and it's going to store that. So right here is our variable for our power dialog items that you just saw. Index one, the one and two, is going to be the player number. In this case, it's player one. It could be player two if we call it and it's going to store this last created dialog item at spot one and it just goes on and on and on for each dialog item that we have Okay, very simple what's great is if this is called for another player player two for example it's going to store these same uh, dialog items but it's going to do it for player this will be number two because it's player two so uh, hopefully you get an idea what that is arrays and especially multi-dimensional arrays can be very very complicated but an array in general is basically a variable is a, obviously a box that holds something so you can think of arrays and multi-dimensional arrays as boxes a box let me rephrase this a box inside a box inside a box inside a box inside a box complicated but think about it this way you have a box that's containing uh, PC parts, and they're in boxes. That's a multi-dimensional array, basically. You have the outside box, that's the actual array, and then the multi-dimensions is each box type, and so on and so forth. So just think of it that way. A simple array is just a box containing items in it. Uh, and how much, how many items are contained in it is defined by the actual uh, uh, size. Hopefully that explains it. I, it's a real crash course on our multiple arrays and multi-dimensional arrays. If you want more information, if you really want more details and it more explained out in proper format, there are some great tutorials on YouTube, programming tutorials uh, about arrays and multi-dimensional arrays. It doesn't matter what programming language really you use or whatever, uh, arrays and multidimensional arrays are pretty much the same for, for any uh, programming language. Uh, so I would look those up, take a look at them to get more details. Uh, I know that, so if you're not quite understanding, you think you have it, go take a look. It's much easier to do that. So this is where, if you can understand that, this is where our preset really comes in handy. We're doing it as a custom script integer and that pretty much opens the script value up to being used. The script value is is basically straight galaxy script. A galaxy script representation of the type. In this case it's integer so it's really easy to use. We just put in an integer and we put in our value for that integer. And what I wanted to do when I did this is I knew I need, had a ton of dialog items and I wanted to make sure when that when on my functions and and other stuff like that. When I choose them, they were easy to, to go through and do so. So I was, what I've done is I've created a preset using an integer, and it's using the value of where this 
item, dialogue item, would be located in our multi-dimensional array. Now remember, we can store up to 50 dialogue items for each player in our multi-dimensional array. So basically what this is, is returning what that number will be for that type. So for instance, the first uh, uh, one here, besides all items, is power generated background. It's the very first item in every single of, uh, one of our dialogue item arrays. And that's represented here. So, and so on and so on for every single item in our array. Obviously, I only go to 43 because that's all I've used. I have room to expand and add more if I want to. What's great about this and how I use this is I went ahead and created a function called get power dialog item. And this is basically going to find the item. It takes two things. One, it's going to take our player number, one or two, and it takes the dialog item from our preset list. This will return that number, 0, 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth. Then what it's going to do is do a simple little if, and it's going to first make sure that we didn't pick all items. Because if we want to get a specific dialog item, there is no all items. It's just, it's used for uh, other things so that if I want to do all items, I can have that specified and I can use that, and it can be just simple if then. That's why you saw me doing that. In this case, we want a specific dialog item. And what happens is it just returns uh, a value from our power dialog items, basically the, the dialog item, because that's what it's returning. The player is index 1, like we know, and index 2 is our dialog item. Now, I have a func there's a function here called convert preset to integer. Most uh, functions for different types will have this. Some don't. In fact, I actually had to make one for Boolean because it didn't have one, amazingly enough. But anytime you want to get uh, the script value from a preset of some type, you need to convert it. And that's just that's just under, sorry, oh jeez, that's just under conversion. See, so there's boolean, or sorry. Wow, I thought it was under conversion. I was so wrong. <laughs> uh, wow, where where was this? I forget where it's located now. I could have sworn it was under conversion. I I don't remember. It is under conversion. Okay. The reason it's not showing up is because it's already picked. Sorry. Uh, but depending on which type it is, uh, that's where it'll show up. Is under conversion. If if you're under that type and everything like that, and there it didn't show up because I already have it selected. But if there is not one, you'll have to make one. Making a, a conversion is very, very simple. I'm going to do that really quick, just because it's not that hard. Whatever you're doing for it, for it, it it's just a function. You want to do, for your options, function, operator, return the type that you want to convert it to, and for parameters, take what you're taking in. In this case, for the Boolean one, I'm taking any preset. You don't get that option unless you click the operator. Uh, checkbox. Any preset and the type is boolean. So uh, preset boolean, and this, that's converting it into a straight boolean. Uh, so just really quick, and it's getting the dialog item pr parameter. So in this case, if I called this function and I said player one and I picked uh, power use bar, it would return six, and it would. Just like if you entered power dialog items uh, one six, it does the same exact thing except now I have a dynamic function using presets that I can call at a will, at will, uh, and it's very very easy to use. And if I want to add more, say I add more items or I reorder them, I just change the presets here uh, and their values and where they're set. I don't have to change a whole bunch of triggers. So that's an example uh, of that. But let's say something more practical, like units. Let's say you want to get uh, a specific unit preset. Actually, I do have that. If I can remember where I stuck it. <laughs> uh, ah, I actually have yeah unit types. I actually have unit types. 
because I want to do a comparison or, or something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head. But I want to do unit types. In this case, I did a custom script game link because they're unit types. And as you can see, I'm actually calling the IDs. In this case, this first one is all. There is no such thing. I just made that so I can select all. Ion Cannon is Planetary Fortress. That's the ID of the unit. And the, of course, if you don't know what that is, you go to any unit here, whatever it is, you double click on it, the ID. Okay? That's what I'm calling for. That's what I'm checking on. And I'm calling that again as a script value. And I have quotation marks because it's, it is a string. And that's how Galaxy Script uh, references it. Uh, so when we go to part three, I'll go over that and again how to actually use it in an action or a function or whatever you're using it in. So stick with me. I, I'm sorry this is a little longer than I expected, but uh, we'll finish wrap it up in part three.